Baby Beard! <laughs> All right, I'm a delivery boy! <laughs> Who is Hermes planning on killing? I think we should let the orphans run free. <laughs> you've redeemed funds. Yeah, exactly. You haven't. You haven't. He's just an old guy. Can we talk about <laughs> evil Lincoln? Oh, of course. No, this art needs to be sent. That's not the voice at all. That's lobster tail. <laughs> let's, let's make it the Look, Christmas. let me ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> he was just about to bring you... Well, shut up and take my podcast! Yeah, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Welcome back to the uh, the Dick Van Dyke Variety Hour. Oh, yeah. Oh, step in time, step in time, step in time, step... <laughs> um, but I ain't on my mind. Who owns the rights to that? Disney. Disney, You cool. mean the uh, uh, parent lords and overseers of the universe, Disney. All right, let's just skirt away from that. Well, Disney, yep. Disney now owns Fox. So yes. So they own Futurama now. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. and they there also uh, are finally able to make a good Fantastic Four film. Are they going to, though? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, that's... I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> Check I mean, back on that later. It's, it's Marvel. Therefore, the movies will be good and the TV series will be a bit... Eh. Uh, this isn't the Marvel podcast, though. Nope. What this is, is uh, Shut Up and Take My Podcast. So, welcome to Shut, Shut Up and, and Take, take My, my podcast. podcast. The future of a podcast where we pit episode against episode in a bloody, glorious, gauntlet battle for, for your, your entertainment. entertainment. Now, as always, I am joined here by Philip J. Notfry. Sounding the horn of eternity. Uh, Pazuzu's second cousin, Josh. I also have a double on Floating Squid World 72A. <laughs> And, and we are joined by Overseer of Everything That Is uh, Not uh, Analog, Sean. Did anyone miss Farnsworth? Oh, right, he's not in this at all, is he? At all. It's because Billy West had too much to do. Yes. He literally does not show up on no, the screen. not even in the background. No. He, yeah. he ain't there. He ain't mm. there. It mm. was such an important episode. What episode, might you ask? Well, that would be season four, episode ten, The Why of Fry. Why Fry? Why? What is the Why of Fry in reference to? Um, um, the Why of... Because... Something. Fry sounds like why, and this is a very is a philosophical rhyme. episode... It's so, not a reference to anything. Yeah, yeah just okay. is. It's just, not yeah. even said. But just why? a rhyme. It's just a rhyme. But why? It's just but a rhyme. Mm. Just a rhyme. Rhyme for the times. Yeah, we can thank Wes Archer for that. Our director. If we're wrong, then can I just take a moment? Sean's us. segues are on point right I, now. I, I can Don't do them. Don't lampshade them. Don't lampshade like, them. Like I can do segues if I need to. I just choose not to. Yeah, that's 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 it. Sure. Wes, Wes Archer is our back from Kif gets knocked up a notch. Bam. There you go. Um, so Wes Archer is known for many things. He's currently the supervising director for uh, Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. However, he first came to fame in this is a batshit insane animation that he did while he was in college called Jack Mac. And Rad Boy Go. Okay. Okay. I've never heard of that before. Oh, watch it. It's pretty much the inspiration for Beavis and Butthead. Oh, oh okay. I, so that's and the I'm tone. out. And that's I'm out. That's the tone we're going for. Yeah, okay. it's just these two delinquent teens that go on this uh, drive from hell. It's about a three minute short. It's very kind of eclectic, very erratic. The style is frenetic. The pace is insane. Mm. Where's Archer voice is one of them. Kind of has this kind of voice. Yeah, let's go, Rad Man. Yeah. <laughs> That kind of voice. It's like that. Is he Aussie? Well, I put the Aussie tone onto it. Right, yeah. Because that's Sean. And in the course of three minutes, they run over a dog. Two cops get run over by a train. They blow up four nukes and then end up in hell where they get tortured. Wow. Okay. Thank you for telling me, Sean, because now I don't need to watch it because I don't want to watch it. It's quite famous. It's a cult classic, everyone. Ah, you've lost me even more. This is a very thoughtful episode, so it's a bit weird. But Um, why? Uh, because it was a it was a very thoughtful episode written by David X. Cohen, who's back from uh, the Raiders of a Lost Arcade portion of Anthology of Interest 2. And that, of course, he's one yeah. of the show's creators. Creators. Mm. The founding father. Mm. Um, it, it almost is like something incredibly significant to the entirety of the plot happened in this episode. Potentially. Mm. Uh, it's kind of a throwaway episode, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can just skip this podcast episode, please. Don't oh, I've lessons. got notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, David X. Cohen, uh, one thing that I noted is that Animation comedies, uh, he was one of the first uh, people to introduce an animation that was under the Writers Guild of America. Okay. Because until 1998, primetime animated uh, shows weren't a thing in the Writers Guild. Mm. Okay. So four um, four shows were the first to go in, which was The Simpsons, Mm -hmm. Futurama, Mm -hmm. King of the Hill, and Family Guy. Yeah. Because Family Guy got greenlit in 1998. They were all breakthrough... 
TV shows, wh- wh- whatever, mm. whatever your opinion on King of the Hill and Family Guy, yeah. they were very popular and are very popular and, and really broke through the, into sort of mainstream TV slots, yeah. Yeah. which hadn't really been done with animated shows before. So. True, true, true. It, it kind of blew my mind that Family Guy was conceived tw- uh, 23 years ago. Yeah. yeah, 95 and then was greenlit in 98 so and some, right. some would say <laughs> hasn't been good since then <laughs> <laughs> no. or ever yeah. uh, air date for this episode is April 6th 2003 introducing the mayor's aide Chaz, Chaz. Chaz. Yeah. do you know who he's voiced by is it Bob Odenkirk? Yes, it is. Oh, Mr. Right. Bob Odenkirk yeah. himself, our brother of writer of Futurama Bill, Bill Odenkirk. Odenkirk and um, also Saul from Better Call Saul. 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 And Breaking Bad. There you yeah. go. Uh, let's hit the jingle here. Um, what do we think? What do we think? Oh, when we're we th- thinking, what Damn do we it. think? I did the wrong jingle. What's the one two before that? I am Sean and I am the best. Hang on, hang on. I do everything. What? What do we think? What do we think? What? <laughs> Shit, I just want to see the plot. <laughs> Fuck, where is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's the plot, Phil? What's the plot? Pl- Phil, what is the plot of this episode? Good. Oh, my God. We plot. are really bad at this. Um, uh, you guys are. Uh, this is the story of uh, both how Fry saves the entire universe from destruction mm. and also the story of ultimately how he was frozen in the year 1999. Yeah. That's it. That's what, that's what episode covers. A thousand yeah. years of leading up. What do yes. we think, guys? Mm. Um, yeah, uh, uh, there's some nice moments in this episode, but I actually was a, I, th- I found it a little slow um, and a little, dare I say, dull. The moment that the Scooty Puff Jr. is brought out and Fry is writing that, from that point onwards, I love the episode. Everything up to then, I'm like, I don't care. I right? Don't yeah. Care. Interesting. This is one of my favorite episodes of Futurama so far. Really? Oh, really? Hands okay. down. Really? I did not have that much fun in this episode. No. Uh, not there's not a huge amount of laughs. In yeah, it. there's a lot of emotional content, and that stuff lands. Yeah. It's well written. Um, the the Fry and Leela stuff at the end is really sweet. Yeah. Uh, there's a great animation touch where he he walks into the hole left by Chaz's burnt face. Yeah, and it's a really nice touch. It's Absolutely. a very visual way of of. Of portraying their relationship. It's like there's the heart of the matter. There's like, we want to give the attention to the thing that's been there since episode one. This has always been planned. This is always the idea mm. that he was frozen by Nibbler. Mm. And that's amazing. And yeah, leading up to the, and the brain stuff, amazing. But everything before then, I'm like, God, I just don't care. God, I thought like being dis- depressed and jazz that. and stuff. Well, See, you t- tell us about how you feel. Well, then. first yeah. of all, if you're using the uh, now Disney owned patented Sean's uh, three pronged um, mm. approach to Futurama mm. episodes, mm. Uh, congratulations has, on selling it to Disney. Yeah, I, I made nothing from it. <laughs> um, it has the emotional residen- residency like you've already covered. This is probably yeah. the most I've felt attached to kind of any resolution with Brian Leela in a long time. Yes. It feels like a genuine step because for once, this kind of was fully enforced by Leela. Yeah. Yeah. Just fully this realisation. And it's not necessarily romantic in a sense. It's just, yeah. hey... You're Fry. You're the person that's always there for me. I I, I love being around you. That's but this great. is the second part of the episode, Sean. Did you like the first half? Yes, I did. I then, did. But I'm getting to that first. Excellent. Um, also, He's the cover other, the two other pillars. Yeah. Mm. Um. The other part of the one of the other foundational points is the sci-fi yes. aspect. Yes. Time travel for the first time proper. No, no. Roswell. Roswell then as well has yes. time travel. Yeah. This is the time travel aspect, and more to the point, dealing I'm, with paradoxes as well. I. I've always talked about what I like, which is world building. Yes. And I really love that this is a foundational episode of Futurama. The kind of mm. one of the two episodes, really, that they've planned from the beginning. The other one being... Leela's homeworld. Yeah. The, the revelation that Leela's yeah. a mutant. I mean, uh, the thing that everyone points out after this, this came out was, look, Nibbler, his shadow was there yeah. all along. This yeah. has always been planned. And that's very bold and very well executed. And I needed to correct myself. Uh, in Jurassic Bark, I said that they explained why Nibbler is also in the trash can. I was misinformed. I forgot that uh, that is just there because they were like, let's make it more obvious that's Nibbler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's why that was one of my critiques. Of yeah. the, if it's like, ah, oh, you, you're yeah. kind of really shoehorned. I misremembered. Now. I uh, head cannon thought that he was hiding in the bin and then climbed out. But I don't know. <laughs> and also, like, I just, I don't know, I like the through line of Fry, which is really in keeping with this character, which is he feels like he's worthless and he doesn't understand. Like, oh, yeah. there's something I want to talk about as well. Um, the, the other thing uh, before we move on to that is the 
humor is the other pillar, and I really struggle to find mm-hmm. good humor in this episode. This this moment, it's yeah. not. It's not completely boring. Uh, I, I'd, agree, not, I'd but, absolutely agree yeah. the humour's not there. It yeah. didn't worry me as much. Because yeah. Roswell that ends well, it was it still had humour, but yeah. it was it took a back seat to the other um, yeah. two yeah. pillars. Oh, like, I just think it's it's not there's not enough. There like there just needs to be more. For me, yeah. that's that's the thing that, that I was very surprised about on this viewing. It was like yeah. there's not a lot of of jokes in this episode the begin- at all the beginning is kind of fun it proves that it doesn't matter who goes on the voyage if it's Fry it's always going to go to somewhere bad and if Fry's not going on that voyage it's always to somewhere fantastic yes yeah. Lilo where you get medals <laughs> yeah. and like even like the locker room thing was nice the locker room sequence is really cool like the like, little the little uh, blue flame blowtorch for the like underarm and brushing, like, his, brushing eyes. his eyes yeah, but it makes the sound of brushing teeth still yeah. Lila and like that's fun and I like that Fry's and, being mm-hmm. kind of he's got that self importance like yes. you know where's my lunch Okay, like, what, what's, what does he get? The, the mission report, which is just a little lithographic. Yeah, which is so uh, cool. Yes. Uh, and, <laughs> and he to a and dragon, possibly Pazuzu. He yeah, gets, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> he gets angry that his, uh, his mission bag has, a, has the, the same, same toy, toy that he got last time. Which is a curious kitten, which has shown yeah. up a few times. Yeah, now, which yeah. Uh, was also, last week, it was on Leela's backpack when she was going into the sewer. It was yeah. just briefly. Nice bit of world yeah. building, yeah. isn't yeah. it? So this that. is the third episode in a row. That, I, I don't know if they yeah. keep progressing past that. Right. But... Curious kitten, maybe, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It loves you more than your parents do. Yeah. So you say you don't care about that stuff at the beginning, but uh, I was going to agree with Sean mm. in that, like depressed fry whose uniform by the way his like space uniform he walks in with mm. I feel like is based on Luke Skywalker's pilot's outfit from uh, Hoth no no from, from New Hope the from New Hope, Hope. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's his X-Wing outfit got a, yeah, I'm got pretty sure it is which is, nice, yeah. which is a nice touch I think mm. um, but yeah uh, as, as a <laughs> As a depressive myself, yeah. I, I really sympathise with Fry and his feeling that that he wants to be more than he is, and he wants to matter, and yeah. he doesn't. Yeah. Um, and as a, a, In a, a moderately, he should be important. Mm. Like I'm, mm. I'm a time traveller of a thousand. That's years. right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and even his thing is, he is the delivery boy. He's really <laughs> leaning into that in this yeah. episode, and he's just not even needed for that. And. Yeah. I understand that feeling of like being a delivery boy. Feel, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, as a, a cocktail waiter, I guess. Um, but the feeling that that maybe you you could be doing something more, and you yeah. and you're not really living up to your potential. There's a little bit of insight into my inner world for the listeners at home. I think I I think I don't enjoy this as much because in Jurassic Park, I think it was done better. The idea of Fry. Uh, the idea of his place in the world and like his sadness coming through the idea of getting Seymour back and getting Seymour back. Uh, and there's a little bit of brevity in that as well. I just, it's weird. I just don't like the beginning of this episode. Like, I, I like that little gag with like Zoeberg and I like the locker room bit and I'm like, cool. And then I don't care up until the point that they are on the mission. So you don't really like the Chaz and the Mayor's Aid storyline yeah, that much? that's fine. I think it's just, I, I, it, it could have they been. They do a better. lot with it. They do a lot yeah. with it. They go to Elzars, yeah. the skating. Yeah. I do the love sk- that The little, skating, yeah. though, was like in the mid part where I really liked it. Oh, though. right. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. It, oh, the little. The poor yeah. little. Those poor, poor, poor little came, We came here instead of eating. They also didn't get a chance to skate. Leela, like, shoves it into his mouth, and they still don't they get still to skate. They still don't get to skate, no. yeah. Obviously, she, like, I got my win. I'm going yeah. home. Fuck you. Which kids. is kind <laughs> of a little bit counter to Leela's. Like nurturing nature, really, of like protecting. She should have your... shoved it in his face and then got them, got the and then skated with them all. I really, which hope been a, I really hope there's a deleted scene where they are skating because I want that to exist. I in our headcanon, head cannon, there you go. She gets to skate with them. This is the part of headcanon we don't need a retcon later. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> they really lean into how pathetic oh. the life of the orphans is. You can slide around fa- your socks. Yeah, but yeah, my favorite line is the "What socks?" Oh, it's so brutal. that that little girl, brutal. like with the She's three, is hard line and a tail. She has like got some of the best. Orphans orphan lines yeah she's <laughs> like really pathetic yeah. I've got really good orphan lines today uh, got them sweet sweet orphan lines oh last week it was just shit yeah it's uh I'm not a big fan of the brains as characters yeah I, t- I like the big ah. I like the big brain and the returning brain from the previous brain episode mm. but I don't really like any of the other brains <laughs> they're distinct characters yeah. now well, uh, the, the main one is just like odd this is uh, this and it's got that kind of like mm. yeah. and I'm like yeah. I like that guy and then there's the giant one as well just like new information detected it's like <laughs> and oh. I, I like how everyone hates him yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. shut up you're not in charge anymore we're in an alternative dimension <laughs> oh what was that line it's like you, you fool, you go into the new universe with us and we'll form a clique and not invite you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. They're very petty, the brains, aren't they? Yeah. They are. Yeah. Um, I enjoy the brains. Yeah, they're <laughs> I, okay. 
there's a they're, they're, they're more than okay. They're more than okay. They're they're, they're an interesting concept. Yes, I quite like them as a they're sci-fi gigantic concept. Brains. Gigantic evil brains. Yeah, they and can't how, see? how Fry is furious at them from just for wanting to learn something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then realizes that it will also destroy the universe. universe. It's like, Okay, okay, now, now it's personal. <laughs> think... There's that writing trope that I'm always really angry about. Where <coughs> they're explaining the mission as they're heading towards the mission. Yeah. Like, come on, give Fry a heads up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Tell him before. But the thing <laughs> is, it really helps him to have no idea because <gasps> yeah. if, he, if he thinks too much, they'll notice him. And I, I just realised what I think my problem with this episode is. Ah. I love the first Brain episode. Like yeah, you're first... talking about this off ca- off camera, and off mic, off mic, off camera, off uh, the record. Um, I completely love that episode because I think everything in that episode lands. Whereas I think in this episode, the reveal of Fry being frozen is fantastic, mm. but the rest of it, it feels like a like they're just going through the motions of the same nibbler plot, but not as fun, not as new, not as fresh. I, I was like, especially when they go to Planet Eternia, and I was like. Yeah. Wait, which which bits are, are, are in this episode and which are from the yeah. Day of the Earth Stood Stupid? Yeah. I was like, they're covering a lot of this s- similar ground mm. with the jokes about them being cute, but, yeah. but, but Except not. Except the, right. uh, the, the alien language on the pillars are different now. Oh, oh right. It says Fuzzy Wuzzy. Aww. Aww. They also changed... Uh, it's a different type of feast. Because when Leela goes there, it's the Feast of a Thousand Hands. And when they Hands, go there, yeah, a, yeah. And now it's a Feast of a Thousand Beasts. He M's and N's. He's really struggling. Yeah. yeah. I well, I, also, I, I, I always thought it was hands. I didn't think, right, I right. said hand as in like hand, right, not right, as right. in ham. So that was uh, my mishearing. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> now it's the Feast of a Thousand Beasts. Yeah. Also, they didn't give the proper greeting to each other this time. It wasn't as, it wasn't as friendly this yeah. time, the greeting between Nibbler and the... Um, it's like yeah. a thousand greetings or whatever it is. Yeah, none yeah, of that. Yeah. None yeah. of that. It, it, yeah, it's... I think it's the problem with this episode is that the whole Nibbler brain side of thing needs to be compared to the original episode in the sense that it's it kind of treads similar ground, but it's not as fun. Yeah, the I, I guess because they're going in the same place and they're like, well, we can't really reuse the exact same jokes. Yeah. Right? So, and I, I, I feel like it's a bit of a one-trick pony. Like, the yeah. these epic, intelligent life forms are also insanely cute and they can't escape that yeah, yeah. as much as they'd like to but yeah. that gag is done they've done that gag yeah. it's, it was funny initially but they doubled down on it this time like with more cutesy things also added like even the the head one like uh, like batting the little mouse oh yeah, yeah. and it's like okay, he's got a okay. scratching post like, yeah, okay. yeah. and even giving the Scooty Puff Jr it's like the Scooty Puff Jr is genius yeah. it's probably my and, favourite design and that's where it picks up for me at that point onwards I'm on board with this episode but the first half I just can't oh, get just, it's like I, I, I love this because my brain's not computing like I'm I hear what you guys say and you're like oh and they go to here and they do this thing and it's and uh, and I go, I agree, I agree. But I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I like those points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm like but, a kid in a candy store this episode. I totally get that. But there is one thing that we can all agree on, which is the, the final... Buff one. Junior sucks? Uh, this, yeah, it, it does yeah, suck. It does suck yeah. <laughs> it's amazing until you have to use it, in which case <laughs> you're like, ah. Oh. But the the Fry uh, conversation both... Yeah, when he's pulling pulling the chair back. Yeah. While still deciding what to do. Yeah. yeah. And even like uh, when he's talking to the Niblonians and the Brains, and there's that actual countdown that is keeping up to the time. It's like, it's an appropriate countdown. It's not like a film countdown. Yeah, it's, it's satisfying. 30 uh, seconds I, left. I counted because I just have to. Yep. Uh, it was correct to 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Which, I, which I thought was the case. Which is, which I, is I really like still the line. good. Yeah. Still really good. <laughs> I really like, like the line, you'll only have 60 seconds to make an exciting escape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even like that conversation, like we get a lot of heart from Fry with the idea. It's like, what is one life compared to that of the universe? And it's like, but it was my, my life. My life, yeah. And then even that conversation. It's really, yeah, yeah. It's really, yeah, it lands well, yeah. And even we get the the plot point that it is preordained that Fry and Leela will end up together when Nibloni says, oh, she must be the, the, the other. other. And it's yeah. like, oh. And it's one of the kind of fundamental aspects of Fry's character that his order of um, priority is Leela's life always comes first. Yes. Mm. Then his above anyone, anyone else. Yes. yes. Then something to do with Bender. Yes. <laughs> so he, w- he would not have saved the universe had no, it not no. been for Leela's inclusion in said yeah. universe. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, who is the voice of Nibbler? Nibbler, it's still Frank Welker. Oh, Fra- well, Frank yeah. Welker. I adore the line that he does at the moment where Fry comes in and grabs him like from the past he yes. grabs, and it's like there, that is genuinely delivered well from Frank Welker yeah. like that it's, it's, like, it's like genuinely confused and it's like great you, you know why because Frank is finally relishing being able to use normal human words yes <laughs> instead of 
by horses <laughs> trotting he down a road does track. a good job of it. He does a very <laughs> good job of it. He's Yeah, it's kind of interesting to be the voice of Nibbler in two different ways. Like yes. non-speaking Nibbler and they're almost two different characters. Uh, yeah. Can I do one of our patented uh, weird continuity questions? Sure. Yes, if, please do. If... If Nibbler's poop weighs as much as a thousand suns, yes. how do they ever clean it up? Yes. <laughs> uh, Leela is incredibly, incredibly strong. Incredibly strong. Yeah. She, has been, she can lift up Bender, who is, yeah. give or take, 500 pounds much, or a feather. The poop, much like Bender, uh, weighs as much as it wants to weigh yeah, when it wants yeah, to weigh. Yeah. Or uh, maybe the way they do it in the ship is they're not moving the poop, they're yeah. moving the enti- everything else around, around the, the poop. poop. Yeah. I have a weird time travel continuity point as well question yeah. point question um, point Fry in saving himself by getting the Scooty Puff Senior by uh, going into the past to then making the same preordained decision Through in science. a thousand years I'll get right on it <laughs> that Fry goes back to the alternative dimension yes. and is stuck there because that is a different time stream the Fry that gets out is not the same Fry as the one that went back in time it is the same as the Back to the Future paradox in that Marty has destroyed another dimension's Marty's life by changing the past mm. Yes. Yeah, it, it's always that thing of like, so in now, now as far as Futurama continuity goes, we're now in a different universe. Yes. Um, which well, is really yeah. sad when you start to think about the universe yeah. that he left behind. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, there's two, there's two time streams now with two different fries in it. One that gets away, one that doesn't get away. And that one is in an alternative dimension. It, in both, in, in both of those dimensions, the universe is saved. Because the yes. bomb goes off in both. Absolutely, but yes. one continues without Fry. Yeah. It's very much like Soma, the idea of like you don't leave, like in the game Soma, you don't Great leave, game, your your mind stays in the thing, but you just copy it and put it somewhere else. Yeah. I there is a free to say f- FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> ah, FOMO. Like, how? How? <laughs> well, to, there is complete FOMO because Fry is in an alternative dimension for all time now. Yeah, essentially he's copied himself by splitting the time stream, yes. by interfering with the past. It's like the Rick and Morty, if you follow Rick and Morty, how about what it's like seven episodes in or whatever they he clearly they die and he goes to a different yes yes country. and then in yes. season three they go back to the original Point, uh, yeah. family yeah. and you 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 meet yeah. the family that technically was the season one yeah. family it's like yes. oh shit yeah everything would have just gone to yeah. shit they left them behind the timeline yeah. skew and that incident where Biff is powerful and married to your mother <laughs> and this has happened to me I love Back to the Future but... I, I love thinking about just how time travel would work, like you know whether it's whether you're on the one line or whether it's the multiverse theory. And you I'm, I'm a multiverse. It's, brain. It's, yeah. it's never. Multi- yeah, it's multiverse. It's never fully satisfying. No, it, it is. Yeah. Out. No. Also, time travel. Uh, you can't technically time travel because the Earth is in a different place to when you travel. So if you travel in that exact you same location, space. yeah, yeah, you die. So Unless you have a suit on. It's multi-dimensional mm-hmm. time travel theory that allows it. That's yes. when it gets confusing. You know, technically, yes, it's not Nibbler who causes Fry to be frozen. It is Fry. It's Fry. Fry. Well, now it is Fry. Now it's, it's Fry. Fry is, Fry is his own grandfather. Yes. And yes. he froze himself. Pain. Well, this, yeah. is, this is where it gets weird, because... This te- is where it gets weird. <laughs> well, technically, it is Nibbler who freezes him, but then... Originally, by, yeah. But now trying to stop him, Fry is now responsible for freezing Fry. Yes. Right. Where At what point do you reckon we've lost the audience? Um, <laughs> I think it was around the time that we started doing a the step podcast? in time, step in time. <laughs> oh, but I don't know. So but I episode three of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. probably, yes. Um, so a few things that I should mention is um, the accolades of the episode. I've only got two here. So it sits at number 15 on IGN's top 25 Futurama episodes. Really? And number six on TV.com's top 10 Futurama episodes. And it's one of two Futurama episodes not to feature Farnsworth. The next one will be the very next episode only next week. two episodes don't have wow. any Farnsworth in Any Farnsworth whatsoever. In any way shape or form wow. this yeah. even has like a bit of uh, Amy right she has a line yeah yep. not Hermes but Hermes is, isn't in a lot of episodes no and no Lamarche I think is not really around a lot yeah. I think a couple Lamarche of weeks the brain in this one yeah. Yeah. yeah I think a couple of weeks ago no. we were complaining that Amy's kind of vanished for a while and now we've got like a, quite a few episodes where Amy is like in all of them oh, we're just sick of her she's now not really, she's, not really, she's not really featured a lot no last episode she has a just scene or two so, yeah. yeah she never really has like a happy medium does she she's either the central focus of the episode or she's kind of just has one line yeah, or yeah, not there yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I don't know. I I can give half of this episode. I love half of this episode. I I, I like. Mm. I think the things it sets out to achieve. Yeah. it does really well. Exactly. Right? The, the, it's getting there that I have a problem with. Yeah, I just think it needs a bit more levity and energy to to take you through to that yeah. stuff. 
Um, uh, it's not. It's not a bad episode. I was no. just don't remember it the same way as when I f- yeah. first watched. Going it. into it, I thought of it more fondly, and then watching it, I was like, oh. But then the things I remembered fondly, I still like. Oh yeah, for sure. It's interesting, yeah. right? Because I think I have a greater appreciation for it because um, I've been going through the series like kind of uh, every yeah. week for the yeah, past yeah. year and a half. It's like, and now kind of the, the stakes mean so much for me because I've mm. watched it sequentially. Yeah, yeah. It's gone all the way through and like. Ah, yeah, like, what's interesting about this episode as well is that when they did, like, because they waited, this was one of the episodes they had planned out from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Do this, it's in the Powered episode, it's there, it's yeah, all yeah. set, they knew exactly where they were going. And um, they they wanted to wait until the show was fully established before they introduced time travel. That was the idea. <laughs> as we pointed out. They, they tested the waters with Roswell. Yeah, yeah time yeah. travel is a bit of a fucked up thing to try yeah. and tackle. But by the time they introduce it, so when they did the commentary for this episode, mm. they already knew that they were being cancelled. Oh, oh so wow. So by the time they got it on, they knew they were finished. Yeah. So they didn't worry too much about screwing with continuity because yeah. they're, yeah. they're, they're going to end. They soon. do wrap up some nice loose ends, though, and it, it shows the weight again of uh, Fry becoming his own grandfather, which was a nice, oh, nice so little many, thing. So many episodes are referenced. Yeah. Really. So many episodes. You've mm. got The Pilot, you've got Jurassic Park, uh, Roswell that ends well. I would like... If you did the the if the day the Earth stood stupid, if it was that plot, and then midway through Fry is then leading the charge and then defeats the brains and he learns this, like I would like if these two episodes were put together. I think that would or make, it, my a, make it a two parter. Yeah, well, that was my thing for last was, week. I lost my voice there, so that was more dramatic than I meant. Yeah, it to last be. week I said two parter. I think. Yeah, this could if if the plot was saved for one of the movies, but they didn't really know they were going to make the movies True. until after they got canceled. This Why would, a Fry movie that would this yeah, would have maybe. made an amazing film, I think. Yeah, because you could have had a lot more room to sit the really well realized emotional stuff alongside yeah. gags and humor and action. And yeah. I mean, in Bender's Big Score, it's a very big time travel focused plot. Yeah, because that's right. The idea yeah. if we could do the Bender's Big Score, but also have Fry learning of this and defeating something otherworldly. I think it would mm. have a lot more weight to it. It feels like a like a movie scale like reveal as well. Yeah, oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, four also, seasons in the making. As, uh. as a, a massive reveal that happens in this episode, mm. uh, Bender for the first time doesn't say meat bag. Meat loaf. Meatloaf. 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 Which is either more endearing, or I think it's more endearing. It's like yeah. you graduate from meat bag to meat loaf. <laughs> it's so harsh. Nibbles we'll do anything you want. Bowling. Yeah. Nah. 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 Nibbler's diaper disappears relatively quickly and then is never to be seen again in this episode. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't paying when attention. When he's on a Fry's lap, he's got the uh, the diaper and then when they go out, he's no longer wearing the diaper. Oh, right. There you yeah. go. Fucks off the diaper. Don't need it. Yeah. Don't need it. We're going to poo just, on just his way. He's prepared for... Leave. I love as well how he just not... Like, okay, there's one thing that I think pays off and it's better than uh, the original, uh, the, uh, uh, the Day of the Earth is still stupid. It's when Nibbler knocks out Fry. It's like, I have other amazing powers. Really? Like what? Whack! Yeah. Great. The, the ability to blackjack. Yeah, yeah. It's like and fantastic. Also enjoy because Leela knows how Fry feels about her, yeah. and kind of his his issues and mm. and his loneliness, his insecurities. And she's, she's very happy to be like, I guess we didn't need you. Good work, Bender. We were an amazing <laughs> team. Right? Oh, I'm so glad us. you're here. My yeah. date with someone else is going fantastic. Oh yeah. The, for the yeah. for the delivery one though, he was looking up things in the he was looking up swear words in the dictionary. They thought that that would be a better suit of his time. And it's like, well, we had fun. Fry had fun. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Exactly. The Chaz <laughs> the Chaz thing's interesting though. It's like. You, is she is she being malicious or just totally insensitive? Uh, she's, or, or is she like, she's like giving him the benefit yeah. of a doubt and yeah. being like, you can handle this. I think yeah. you're all adults. Leela is really, really, really happy. And when she's really, really happy, she is kind of self-focused. She gets oblivious. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It, she's got not, even more tunnel vision than she'd already yeah, have. It's not malicious. It's it like, takes a lot of bad behavior yeah. from, from Chaz yeah. for her to finally be like, oh, wait. So I think it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's even like one thing of bad behavior. Like it's the only the first time that he's done something wrong in that date. And I it guess was a biggie. It I mean, a... there's some really embarrassing, cringy stuff when he like they're like ah table for two, and then he has to insist that he yeah. gets a table for two. Elsa's line Elsa... is one of my favorite oh, yeah. deliveries of a line because he like he doesn't quite think it holds weight. Yeah, but he he'll go along. He's like okay, okay, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's because he's confident. Because he's confident, it's uh, his like his douchey yeah. attitude can be forgiven up until the point that he is a douche, and he's important because yeah. he has clout. Yes, he does. 
get some connection to your kids. I feel so bad for those orphans, man. Uh, well, what was I going to say? Um, oh, uh, another little bit of uh, uh, evidence that Fry might have uh, synesthesia. Yes. He's, he asks if everything smelled like purple for a second. Oh, yeah. He and he does recognise it... blue and purple. As smells. During the two time travel episodes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it kind of activates his... When his brain gets mu- fucked with, it activates his <laughs> synesthesia. Yeah. He does often, like, taste colours and things like that. Like yeah. He, he, there's just these throwaway lines where he yeah. says that kind you of stuff. You just taste blue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I kind of like as a, as a little under-running thing. Yeah, also, yeah. we'll never know. Maybe that's scientifically accurate. Because until we... Actually, yeah. Actually time travel, we, have we no, won't know if we have that ability. Yeah, we have no idea. Or whether we have smission. No, you keep, you keep going on smission. What is smission? One day you will get smission. Answer me, what is smission? <laughs> I'm not answering anything. It's... Oh, uh, the, the um, animation... Yes. When Fry is teleported, uh, he has the space-time transfer. Oh, yeah. And he gets all spaghettified and yeah. twisted and warped. That is cool. That is good animation. Yeah. It's really disturbing. Yeah, there yeah. Was, there was also going to be a little deleted scene. Uh, well, no, sorry. The initial idea is they were going to add in a scene which actually had Fry going through the thousand years. Mm. And kind of oh, right, yeah. From My question on that, by the way, is... So... <coughs> Does, is Fry? Does Fry? Yeah, no, he does remember everything because at the end it gets wiped at that point. Yeah. Mm. But does that mean that Fry had to go through everything in the future again, pretending like he doesn't know to keep everything as it was to get to the point in Why of Fry? Because uh, he goes back to the um the point of uh being frozen, right? Yes, but that's a, the Nexus is only able to go for that Nexus, and the moment that Nexus has passed, he's no longer there. Yes, but then but then that Fry. But Where does he reappear? Because he, he would, he he would knows... reappear back in the sphere. Yes, he reappears back in the sphere. In an alternative timeline where he has saved a past Fry, but forced himself back into an alternative. This is where the time travel so gets weird. wibbly yeah, wobbly. Right. Yeah. Gets... Like the, other, the other thing is, like other, the other option then is he has to go through yeah. the entire C series of Futurama again well, yeah. and do every decision exactly the, the same, same or he fucks with this it. This isn't Doctor Who. Well, it's meant to happen. Yeah, this isn't Doctor Who Fuck. paradox, full paradox of time. It happens because it happened. It will happen only because it has happened. This is multidimensional Back to the Future and Terminator theory where you can change things and it creates alternative timelines. But can you? Yes, because the Scooby Cop <laughs> Senior. That is a significant change, and therefore... It's a significant upgrade. Yeah, no, it's a very significant change. This, but, yeah. but that thing's that, awesome. But did, yeah. he, but did he come at the Nexus point, and it was already there for him? Or no. did he have to go through everything again, and then, sure. and then they're like, here's the Scooty Pop. All they do is just they just they just they skip straight to the destruction, yeah. right? You never know. So you don't know yeah. where Fry came back to. Yeah, this I, is the problem. Yeah. We'll never know, and knowing half the battle, and uh, that's just... G.I. Joe! <laughs> Should we head on to a vote? Just uh, to get away from the timey wimey uh, stuff? Or? Yeah, it's yeah, super yeah, timey wimey. I love the timey wimey. Right, I'm just going to start off, because I know this is going to go... I have to go with Why Fry. Uh, I have to go Bar. Jurassic Park, oh, no. and I um, also have to go Jurassic Park. Yeah, Bar. let's yeah. curb it there. Yeah, that's Nate. Right. How I felt last week when it was just like the thing. It's like oh, I know the other two are going to vote for yeah. something. So I'm going to vote for this one. Oh no, but I actually want to vote for. Oh Wyatt well, Bar. I also wanted to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt like you were just doing a just protest. Vote. No, yeah. I've never protest voted in my entire oh, life. You made it seem like it was a protest vote. You I said it was kind con- of. I said it. controversial opinion. No, no, but after that, when you, you're like, I, I knew you guys. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Felt like a, I felt like you, vote. you said the only reason you did it is because we would vote for the other one. No, I, one of the reasons. I felt oh, right. safe, oh, I felt oh, safe in, in an alternate, in an in alternate, alternate version. <laughs> where I'm in a giant brain sphere. <laughs> right, well, uh, this I, is not a protest vote, ladies and gentlemen. But. Both of those episodes, like, if, I can, if I can do a little bit of explanation, both of these episodes have, have uh, emotional weight, right, yes. and a focus around Fry. They're actually quite good episodes to compare. And both but, are pasty kind of episodes as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, the... Other episode is uh, Jurassic Park is funnier. Uh, the yeah. whole lava sequence is freaking uh, hilarious. Professor Lava, uh, oh, it's, it's great. Here's, it's here's so the one thing funny. That I noticed is that the the bits of emotional resonancy, specifically the end with Fry and Leela, mm. has got me. Like it gave yep. me a, a oh like, yeah, yeah. Total total reaction. reaction. Totally. And what's weird is I am a massive dog person, and on that viewing of Jurassic Park, it didn't get me. Mm. Like mm. I didn't feel the overwhelming, crushing sadness as if Nibbler had pooped on my soul and yeah. I was being crushed down. Which I think I, I think that. you raise as well as a point, Phil, was like the idea that you it didn't <laughs> it didn't hit you as hard because you were watching with other people. It's like, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that maybe if you watched it by yourself, I should watch it by myself at two AM when I'm still awake. Yeah, yeah, when or you're, you're tired and emotionally drained. Yeah. yeah, or like last time when you broke up with someone, uh, where you said you said you Bambi, <laughs> yeah. Bambi. Bambi that's oh no, that's a terrible idea. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, but yeah, so, so there you go. It's in the record books. Um, um, by the way, for just for the for the records as well, Ellen would have voted for Jurassic Park. I'm yes. quite sure. Pretty sure. Absolutely, Absolutely sure. Uh, yeah, again, I think like Jurassic Park is solid the whole way through this. Uh, for the, the bits that it hits gold, it hits gold, but for the rest of it, it's pyrite. Uh, it's what? Fake gold. Uh, fool's gold. Okay, thank you. Pyrite. I think she just said pirate. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, they keep hitting pirates. It's, arr, yeah, arr, 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 arr. Um, hey, we're Banjo Kazooie. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to join us next week, and you would like to join us next week, as you always do, you will join us. Because you're important. We haven't done a voice yet. You are, you are, you are going to yeah. wait while we do a voice before yeah. I finish this sentence. Um, <laughs> yeah, you just, the format's getting looser oh, and looser, isn't oh, it? Because I'm, because I'm, I'm watching the monitor here. Yeah, we are focused on the monitor. It hasn't frozen once. No, we're doing well. <gasps> it's almost like Great. we've had audio issues in this podcast. Oh, what? No. Oh, we Look, we, 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 we did Nibbler one ages ago, which yeah, was yeah, our yeah. non-vocalized Nibbler. So this time we have Nibbler two, oh, vocalized really? Nibbler. Fry. You are the most important person in the universe. You became very uh, like Guinness by the end of it. I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> Verily. If there's nothing if we're not accurate. Yes. Nothing if we're not accurate. We are nothing we're if we're not nothing. accurate. We're just nothing. Uh, uh, no, it, uh, don't focus on that. It would be boring. <laughs> and yes, I don't know the full quote, but... Uh, and that past nastification is what has led you to this moment. I paraphrase, but I just wanted to say the words past, past nastification. So I'm super intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Oh, oh my! No. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, as I was mm. saying before, if you would like to join us once again next week, for all you Trekkie fans out there, yeah. which I know at least one of us in this room is, if not more, if not all, uh, it's not all. It's not all. There Dark you go. Trek. Yeah, it's okay. Meh. Yeah, it's yeah, right. We will be doing Where No Fan Has Gone Before. Great. Great. S- excellent. Another episode that doesn't have Farnsworth. We look forward to it. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, no, I love, love Farnsworth, so I'm uh, a bit sad. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Consequen- it's conse- consequently. Fuck me. Don't no one calls it right, Matt. Fuck. Oh, my God. Oh. Do you want to... We, we need a reboot, I, Sean. I, 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 we need a reboot. And we're just turning Sean off and on again. <laughs> Get pasa. Yes, the door. Hey, <laughs> continue. He's set to Spanish. Shut I'm up okay with this. my podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so yes, uh, donde if, es pantalones? <laughs> uh, if you would like to talk about how shit I am at English, you can do so by contacting us at babybeardmedia at gmail dot com. Mm. Uh, a hurl abuse for our taste and episodes at us on social media. Mm. Uh, at baby beard media, at, fuck, it's at, hard, isn't it? It's, it's spreading. Hard. It's spreading. At baby beard media for all of those things. And if you think that uh, Phil and Sean's inability to speak near the end because they're so goddamn choked up with uh, love is all that you need in your life, then why don't you give us uh, five stars or uh, uh, a small picture of Sean and Phil choking on their own tongues while they try to speak? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. So until that time, I have been Sean. I've been Phil. I've been Pazuzu's second cousin, Josh. Oh, yeah. We had little titles, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. I remember them. Goodbye and bon oui. (laughs) Bon Bon oui to you all. all. We should have ended last episode episode like that. (laughs) Wrong episode. What are you talking about? We're making up for it this week because time travel wibbly wobbly cut. Just weird to not have things fuck up on this one. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Except your tongue, both of your tongues broke. Yeah, we broke, but not the podcast itself. Oh, I think I have a name for my new ship in Elite. <laughs> it's it's Scooty Puff Senior. Scooty Puff Senior. Oh, I'm <laughs> totally going to name it Scooty Puff Senior. That's amazing. You should get a really shitty ship and call it Scooty Puff Senior. Yeah, I will. How, why did we not end last week's episode? Like I don't know. Bon, bon nuit. Bon we bon could go back and record. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, we'll say it now, yeah. and then when you listen to this, Chris, you have to go back in time to when you edited this other, the other episode last week and put this in. Unless it's you don't confusing. want to, in which case you can, you, you, you do what you want. Look, this is just oh, going to confuse him at this point. Nice. It's time travel. It confuses what if, everyone. Oh, this is true. This but what is... if he never goes back in time and then it's... What if... He never epi- edits the episode. What if Chris was Scooty Puff Senior all along? <laughs>